Hello everyone. Welcome again in our online session. In this session, we are going to study about some more method of preparations of haloalkanes and haloarenes. In last session, we have discussed one of the method that is preparation of haloalkanes and haloarenes from alcohols. Now in this session, we'll see some of the further methods of preparation of haloalkanes and haloarenes right so the next method is preparation of haloalkanes and haloarenes from hydrocarbons we'll see it is another method of preparation right in this method also there are some of the few subtypes one of the subtype is by free radical halogenation reaction that is reaction of halogens directly with hydrocarbon compound this is one of the mechanism that is free radical halogenation reaction in this you can take any of the hydrocarbon for example here it is take a normal butane and butane it is reacted with chlorine in presence of ultraviolet radiation that is uv light or either you can heat it at high temperature so it will generate free radicals and the halogen atom will bind on the carbon atom by displacing this hydrogen right similarly it can also bind on this central carbon atom the chlorine in the central carbon so you can get mixture of two products we know that primary would be a minor product and secondary would be a major product right here also it is shown here this compound is 2 methyl butane you can see here first carbon second carbon third carbon and fourth carbon on second carbon there is methyl group so it is 2 methyl butane you can see this central carbon is tertiary carbon right so when you are reacting halogens they are more reactive towards tertiary carbon or you can say the hydrogen can be easily substituted from tertiary carbon chlorine will bind on that tertiary carbon that would be a major product right you can see it is mentioned here the free radical either chlorination or bromination of alkenes gives a complex mixture of isomeric mono as well as polyhalogenated alkenes and which is difficult to separate as pure compounds so one of the compound would be either in higher concentration and another would be in lower concentration so consequently the yield of one of the any one of the compound will be low and another would be higher that is major as well as minor products right next reaction is by electrophilic substitution reaction and this reaction is carried out in aromatic compounds like benzene and toluene we have already studied this type of reaction in previous classes that is electrophilic substitution reaction or you can say esr reaction right in this here it is taken toluene it is methyl benzene will react with halogen in presence of iron as catalyst or you can use iron 3 chloride that is FeCl3 iron 3 chloride which will work like Lewis acid and that is important catalyst in our electrophilic substitution reaction which will produce halogen electrophile and we know that this methyl group or any alkyl group is ortho and para directing so this halogen will bind on this ortho as well as on this para position you can see here we are getting ortho halo toluene right in ortho position and another is para halo toluene right so it is one of the electrophilic reaction it is more easier 
with chlorine as well as bromine the reaction can be carried out easily in presence of this iron halides as catalyst if you are using bromine then you can use febr3 as a catalyst right similarly here it is mentioned that ortho and para isomers which are produced here in this reaction ortho halotoluene and para halotoluene these two isomers which are produced they can be easily separated on the basis of their melting points and even as well as as compared to their boiling points there is a large difference between their melting points and boiling points so you can separate these two isomers on the basis of simple distillation method or either by fractional distillation method and here it is mentioned important that reaction with iodine is reversible means your halogen if you are using iodine then the reaction would be reversed again it is reversible in nature so to avoid this reverse reaction we are using some of the oxidizing agents like concentrated hno3 or you can use concentrated hio4 that is per iodic acid hio4 or either you can use nitric acid which will try to oxidize the hi which is formed during the iodination reaction right so it will try to oxidize this hi into free iodine and you can again convert this forward reaction as it is reversible there is a need to use this two reagents and here it is important to note that fluoro compounds are not prepared by this method right because due to the high reactivity of fluorine it is highly reactive the reactions would be violent they are exothermic in nature right so fluoro compounds are not not produced by this method we'll see later on there is one of the important reaction that is swartz reaction it is halogen exchange reaction you can produce fluoro derivatives right so by this method you cannot produce fluorine containing compounds right next the reaction is one of the most important that is sand mayer's reaction and this reaction is used to produce aromatic haloarenes means either you can produce chlorobenzene bromobenzene or iodobenzene by this reaction and in this we are using one more reaction that is known as diazotization reaction the first step which you are using here it is diazotization reaction means production of diazonium compound right our starting material is important that is aniline this aniline is primary amine right and that is reacted with nano2 that is sodium nitrite and hx you can use any mineral acid hx either hcl hbr hydrochloric acid or hydrobromic acid is taken and the temperature is 273 to 278 means actually you have to take this cold aqueous solution right you can utilize ice bath you can keep this reagents in cold ice bath solution so the temperature would be nearly in between 0 to you can say to 73 that is 0 to 5 degree celsius so meanwhile when you are taking this three reagents in cold solution it will produce benzene diazonium halide right it is known as benzene diazonium halide it is shown here nitrogen and triple bond nitrogen and the central nitrogen is positively charged right it is known as diazonium functional group and triple bond and benzene diazonium chloride means either this halogen can be chlorine or bromine you can name it as benzene diazonium chloride right it is one of the crystalline salt and it is stable only in cold solution so compulsory we have to keep ice bath right 
and even this benzene diazonium halides are utilized when they are produced in the reaction means they must be freshly prepared salts because when you are storing them they are getting decomposed right they are degraded at room temperature they are unstable so compulsorily we have to produce this first step and later on you can utilize this diazonium in sand mayer's reaction right so now after production of this benzene diazonium chloride the second step is reaction with cuprous halide or you can say copper 1 halide where copper is plus 1 in oxidation state you can take this freshly prepared solution of diazonium salt and you can react it with either cuprous chloride or you can use cuprous bromide right so this will try to displace this diazonium functional group this total group is displaced and this halogen will bind on this benzene ring right so we are getting here aryl halide means this x can be either halogen can be either chlorine or bromine so you can get chlorobenzene and bromobenzene respectively and this diazonium group this n triple bond n is converted into dinitrogen gas right it is displaced into n2 gas so in this method you can prepare chlorobenzene as well as bromobenzene same way iodobenzene can also be produced in this reaction it is mentioned here it is shown here you have to take these solutions you can keep them in ice bath right the solution must be must be cold between 0 to 5 degree celsius so that you can get crystals of benzene diazonium halide and you can remove the crystals and you can react with cuprous halide that is cu2x2 cuprous halide which will displace this diazonium group and the halogen will bind on this benzene ring and this diazonium group is converted into n2 gas right the same way iodobenzene can also be produced by this method but there is a slight difference in preparation of iodobenzene here we are using potassium iodide previously we have seen that we are using over here cuprous halide in chlorobenzene and bromobenzene you can see here cu2x2 that is cu2cl2 or cu2br2 in this reaction but in the preparation of iodobenzene we are using potassium iodide simply shaking the diazonium salt with potassium iodide will displace this diazonium halide functional group and iodine will get bind on this benzene ring right and this nitrogen is converted into n2 gas again it is similar right so in this way you can produce all the three halogen derivatives like chlorobenzene bromobenzene and iodobenzene by this sand mayer's reaction some other reactions are also summarized over here you can see the first step again it is similar the reaction with nano2 and hcl or hx the first step that is diazotization reaction and the second step is sand mayer's you can see a reaction with cux copper one halide will produce either chlorobenzene or bromobenzene if we are using potassium iodide ki we are getting iodobenzene and if we are using cucn that is cuprous cyanide it will produce cyanobenzene or you can name it as benzo nitrile in iopac name benzo nitrile and if you are using dilute acid or aqueous sulfuric acid or simply warming this diazonium salt with water will produce phenol right directly it will generate phenol and dinitrogen gas so these reactions are summarized together 
they are important for organic conversions you must remember these reactions right the next method is from alkenes you can produce hello alkenes from alkenes it is a simple type of addition reaction means breaking of pi bond of alkenes and reaction with hydrogen halides you can use any hydrogen halide like hcl hbr or hi you can use in this reaction so this hydrogen will bind with one carbon and the halogen will bind with another carbon and the new sigma bonds are generated right one example is given you can see it is propene and there is pi bond between these two carbons so hydrogen will bind with either one of this carbon similarly this halogen can also bind with either one of these two carbon atoms so we are getting two types of products one is minor product and another is major product means major that is in excess or more quantity and minor that is in lower quantity we are getting you can see here the iodine is bonded on this first carbon and some primary carbon is minor product while here the iodine which is bonded here on this secondary carbon is major product and as we have studied in 11th standard that is markovnikov's rule we know that what is markovnikov's rule the major product will be produced where the halogen will bind with carbon having less number of hydrogen right or you can say that electronegative part of your reagent will bind with carbon having less number of hydrogen atoms right or you can also name it as tertiary and secondary would be major product here you can see the secondary alkyl halide is major product while primary alkyl halide is minor product right the rule is also mentioned over here markovnikov's rule you can see the rule states that whenever there is an addition reaction of a protic acid that is hcl hbr or hi is hx to an asymmetric alkene we have seen that propene is asymmetric asymmetric means the number of carbon surrounding the double bonds are not similar that is asymmetric alkene right so the acid hydrogen atom that is h plus gets attached to the carbon with more number of hydrogen substituents or you can say the halogen group binds with carbon having more number of alkyl substituents or even you can say the halogen can bind with carbon having less number of hydrogen right or there is again mentioned here the rich becomes richer means where hydrogens are already present the same hydrogen of your protic acid will bind with that carbon atom means rich becomes richer and poor becomes more poorer that is one of the analogy mentioned here the rule again it is mentioned that on addition of hx to alkene the electronegative part electronegative means the halogen which is electronegative part of addendum means addition reagent will bind to the carbon with less number of hydrogens attached to the carbon atom means this chlorine or bromine will bind with carbon where hydrogens are in less quantity or you can also say that the carbon where hydrogens are less means that carbon would be having more functional groups or more alkyl groups in branching right so similarly you can mention this markovnikov's rule it is also shown here that the rich gets richer means you can see this carbon has two hydrogens right while this carbon is only having one hydrogen 
and there is double bond between these two carbons so now the rich becomes richer means this carbon has two hydrogens so again this hydrogen is added to this carbon atom so now that carbon is having total three hydrogens right and that would be your major product or you can say the more electronegative part that is bromine will bind with carbon having less number of hydrogen atom so likewise the rule is also similar either you can say the halogen binds with carbon having more alkyl functional groups or the halogen binds with carbon having more branching or carbon having less hydrogen is one of the same thing that would be your major product and the opposite would be minor means if the bromine is binding with carbon with more hydrogen will be minor product but you can also remember that tertiary and secondary products would be major and this primary products would be minor you can see the central carbon is secondary carbon and on that bromine is attached so that would be major product while the here the bromine is attached on primary carbon so that would be a minor product so here it is written that two bromobutane is a favored product right that would be a major product while one bromobutane would be a minor product here it is shown reaction of propene with hbr here propene is your asymmetric alkene right so when you are not using peroxide means in absence of peroxide or no peroxide it will undergo marconico's rule means this two bromopropane would be a major product or secondary and tertiary compounds would be major product while when you are using in presence of peroxide or in addition of peroxide like benzoyl peroxide the primary would be major product that is anti marconikov's rule or also we are naming it as peroxide effect here the mechanism is free radical mechanism right free radical addition mechanism while here it is electrophilic addition mechanism so there is a difference in presence of peroxide it would be anti marconikov's rule means opposite to the marconikov's and in absence of peroxide it will undergo marconikov's rule right here another method is mentioned that is addition of halogens addition of halogens with alkene so in this alkene you can directly add x2 that is cl2 or br2 that is dissolved bromine is dissolved in carbon tetrachloride ccl4 so this two bromine atoms will bind with both the carbon atoms and it will produce vicinal dibromide we have seen what is geminal and vicinal vicinal means halogens attached on two different nearby carbon atoms is known as vicinal dihalide so here it is breaking this pi bond and bromine gets bonded on this two carbon atom and even it is important method for detection of double bond that is test for unsaturation either double bond or triple bond is present you can see the test here it is alkene and alkene the test samples are taken and we are adding bromine water to both the test tubes in alkenes as well as in alkenes the alkene test tube it shows orange or reddish brown color which remains as it is that is original color of bromine remains same there is no change over here but you can see in the test tube of alkene the color of bromine is disappeared means the solution becomes colorless because the bromine breaks the pi bond of alkene and binds with the carbon atom so ultimately the pure liquid bromine br2 loses its original reddish brown color right so this proves that your compound is having double bond right if your test tube becomes colorless means the compound is unsaturated it might be having 
double bond or triple bond and if there is no change in the color of the solution means if it remains reddish brown color there is no change then your compound can be either saturated like alkenes right so it is one of the important test and you can also produce vicinal dibromide by this method next some of the reactions are given here you have to react HBr with this given compound over here it is phenyl ethene you have to predict what is the product in this reaction you can see here bromine is bonded on the central carbon and the hydrogen atom is bonded on this first carbon now why because we know that according to Marconico's rule this bromine will bind on carbon having less number of hydrogen atom or you can say bromine will bind on secondary or tertiary carbon would be a major product so this is your major product according to Marconico's rule and the opposite would be minor product same way second reaction reaction with HCl the chlorine will again bind with central carbon of double bond where it is having less number of hydrogen so 2 chloro butane would be major product and opposite would be minor products only here major products are shown same way another reaction of HBr in presence of peroxide so you can see here there is no use of peroxide but here it is mentioned in presence of peroxide so bromine now will bind on the carbon where more hydrogens are present because it will undergo anti marconicos effect or anti marconicos rule or peroxide effect in presence of peroxide so here the major product would be where the bromine binds on carbon with more number of hydrogens or primary alkyl halide would be major product right and secondary and tertiary would be minor so similarly you can understand the mechanism of the reactions how it is happening right so next we'll study some more reactions related to this that is method of preparation of haloalkanes and haloerenes again some more new methods we'll study in our next online session right so thank you all of you for joining this online session thank you have a nice day